What's good, Jewel? Your girl's back to give y'all another Roller Jam review. Listen, this is episode number two. I'm loving it. Because y'all know I love roller skating. Been skating since I was a kid, but got into more trying to do more than just skate forwards and backwards within the last four years. I'm like trying to build up my skill set. So watching this show and watching these people form groups or crews to compete against one another has been so much fun watching this, right? All right, so this week there's... All right, y'all, so listen. So each episode there's five crews like we saw in the um, first episode, right? So it's just... It's just amazing for me because I'm watching people who I've been following on social media be in these different crews or whatever, right? So this week, we got a crew called Disco Oasis. I don't recognize any of the people that are in this crew. It's like, I believe it was two guys, yeah. It was two guys, three girls. They skated to the... Uh, the decade for this episode was the early 2000s, I guess. And they skated to Britney Spears. The taste of your lips. I'm on a toxic. I'm dipping under. And they dressed up in the little flight attendant outfits and everything. Like to match the video and everything. So it's two guys, three ladies in their group. And they make they are made up of people who skate all kinds of styles. One of the guys, he's been winning all these different... Um, Rhythmic skating competitions. Um, it was somebody else that does some other form of like every everybody on there in their group. They all doing different styles of skating. They come from different ethnic backgrounds too, right? They was called Disco Aces. Then um, you got a group called uh, House of Skate from East Atlanta. Um, I recognize. I recognize. Three of the guys from the group, uh, because I followed them on social media. Um, one of them, and then this the thing: their social media names versus what they what they say and their real name is on this show, totally different. Like one of the guys, like Laron, well, I believe his his name is Laron on social media. I've been following him and his skating for like at least a year or so, a little over a year. That child. That boy, he's so pretty to me. I feel it. I feel like everybody, all the guys in their group is LGBTQ people. Um, Laron, he's like always wearing the half shirts, the little shorts and stuff like that while he skate. The boy can do splits. He can um, on his skate so easily. Everybody, like, I feel like anybody that's, Follows roller skaters on social media. They like the way LaRon backpacks. Like his backpack skating is good. And that's. If you're a person that's not familiar with that. That's when they kind of like. You're skating backwards. And usually somebody's behind you. And it's like real sensual. And stuff. And like the person in the front is bending over. The person behind is holding the um, person in front by the waist. And sometimes they'll put one leg up and stuff. And one of the guys that's in this group with him is. His. IG and social media name is Zam Zemo, but I believe that his name is Demarcus or something like that on here um, in real life. But him, I've been following him for years. I'm going to tell you, the first time I saw him skate, he was skating with this lady. I believe her real name is Ebony, but her uh, r social media name is God's Wife. They were skating. If I'm in the question, H-E-R. Mm, um, Damage. They did a video to damage. It was so pretty. They both had Zemo and um well Demarcus and Ebony. They skated to damage. And it was like a couple skate. I don't I don't want to say it was ballroom skating, but the way them two was interacting with each other and roller skating in this video and whoever recorded it and edited it. They did a very good job. That's when I first came across them two. And that video went viral maybe three and a half or so years ago the video was so beautiful if you go look up god's wife i think it's god's wife 1222 or something like that but as soon as you put god's wife in it should come up or zam zemo z-a-m-n-z-e-m-o go look for that video they were skating to her song damage it's just mm. but that's when i first came 
to know them too as roller skaters. But Zemo, that's how I learned him. And I see him skating with I Solo a lot. And I noticed that he even said it on here. He been going on tour with different singers. He skate background for Missy before, which I did see him doing. But anywho, him and LaRon, they have a bunch of videos where they do backpacking together at, at Cascades. They can skate their butts off. They got two different styles of skating, but they both can skate really, really good. And they also both, uh, well, I know Zemo, he used to skate um, and be in those. These videos are so fun to watch because it just be a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. And that's I Solo. He, his name is Solomon in real life. Um, he's part of, um, Bad Boy Skate Crew, and they be skating in his house, it seems like, or whatever, and, like, they'll be, like, doing a routine for, like, the videos will only be, like, 20 seconds or so, 25 seconds, but it be, like, chaos, like, they be skating, and then somebody comes skating through with some weird something on, or fall, or knock something over, it's just, it be chaos, but it's really fun to watch, but, um, I'm gonna tell y'all, if you're not familiar, if you did watch the Super Bowl, I Solo is the one that when Usher brought out the roller skaters, when the skaters first came on the stage, I Solo came doing his, he had, like, this is his thing that he did. He slid in on his head. He slid into the, the camera screen on his head. It was like, um, he slid in doing that on his head, um, rolling on the skates on his head, and T Smooth, another skater, he, uh, he not in his group, though, but he was skating on the Super Bowl with Usher. He did, like, a, a forward flip. That boy can skate his butt off, too. He actually been going on tour with Usher and stuff, skating, too. But, anywho, their group did real good. They had a really good song, and they had, they put the, in, they had, like, a lot of energy, and they did, they were, like, to me, I really like that they did the floor work, and they were synchronized, because I feel like they was the first ones to do a lot of floor work. In their routine. Um, and I really, really liked it. They, they like, they dance, dance. Wait a minute, am I? Yeah, they did do floor work. And then there was another um, crew called Skate Shot. Now, what was special about this group? I recognized the lady, one of the ladies in that group, because I follow her. She, I started following her because I see her doing the uh getting sturdy on her roller skates she wears her skates are like she got color legs that's like green and white green on one side white on the other one tan on one white on the other one i believe her name is iris verdi if i'm not mistaken and she she recently she just had a baby and she had said on her social media the other day that she was gonna be on this show and she was roller skating in this competition not even knowing that she was pregnant. She said she met her husband roller skating at the skating rink. And they've been married for, um, at this point when they recorded the show, when they filmed the show. And by the way, they filming in New Orleans. When they filmed the show, they had already been married five or six years or so. But she recently gave birth to their baby. I say, I would say maybe within the last month or at least she let us know that the baby was here within the last two or three weeks. So, yeah. Congratulations to you. Um, but like I follow her because of that, like the fact that she was getting sturdy on her roller skates, and I was just like, the talent it takes to be doing that, because you gotta know how to be on your feet and kick your leg up and all that kind of stuff. Like, is it is not easy, y'all. Some of the stuff be looking so simple, but but let me tell you, as a person who be trying to do certain now, I ain't trying to get sturdy on skates. I did cut. No, I ain't trying to get sturdy with no dad with skates. I'm not even going to lie. I, I I haven't tried it, but I really enjoy watching her. But her and her husband, they are in this skate group together. And I believe it was two women, three guys. And like I said, they just had a really nice routine. Um, The judges were saying they just didn't do really good with their transitions. Transitioning to the next move. Um, And they did manage to use all of the rink. But, um, they just didn't transition well. Um, they told LeBron and Zemo's group that they didn't use enough of the rink either. They stayed in one spot and then they like, all oh, was like doing individual things sometimes. So they told them they, need, they needed to work on that. The other group is the On The Road Skate Society. 
This was all guys. I believe it was six of them. It was one, that group, one of the guys, his name is Steve. I recognize him. I've seen him on social media. I don't follow him, though. But I've seen him on social media because he has the freeform locks in his head. And the other one is Dylan Morton. I recognize Dylan because, one, uh, last year they had two skate competitions. One that Push 1515 put on. And um, Dylan and Lazy were the top two. And I believe Lazy won that competition. Or did Dylan win? I think Lazy won that whole competition. I wish that was filmed and put on TV so we can see. I wonder if it was. But this was last year. And then... uh. Dylan, they had a roller skate competition out in, um, I believe it was in Vegas, and Dylan actually won that skate competition. Um, and I, wait a minute, no, I think Dylan won both of them skate competitions, to be honest with y'all. But he went on from them skate competitions, he skated with Usher in the Super Bowl, he was in the Super Bowl, he even mentioned that on here. Um, so those those are the two people that I do recognize uh from social media. That's in this honor roll skate society group. So they their style of skate is uh jam skating. They do a lot of foot shuffling and stuff like that. Quick moves and their skates uh aren't high. Their skate boot usually is uh short, like ankle height. But Dylan got some really nice skates because he got like I pay attention to his skates. Like, I pay attention to people's build, um, skate builds, too. But um, his skates are really nice. They got, like, different colors, like red and green on one skate. And I forget the color on the other skate. I think it's blue. I think it's blue and green on the other one, I believe. But, like, he said that he grew up watching them and, um, like, watching videos of theirs and everything. And eventually he asked to join their group crew. And he he was able to join their crew. Um, they did they did exceptionally well. They actually went last in this episode. They they used the entire rink. They transitioned very easy. I did notice that on one of the moves, I think Dylan kind of like slipped a little bit on one of the moves, but they got really really good praise from Terrell. And he's famous for skating on Venice Beach, but he's a judge in this. And then you got Johnny Weir, who is an an Olympic figure skater. And then you had Michelle Williams from um, Destiny's Child as the guest, the celebrity guest judge or whatever, right? And in the middle of the um, talking, after they got their, like, after they got the feedback from the judges, the guy, Steve, he got a little emotional because he was just like, Y'all don't know what we sacrificed to be able to go to the rink, meet up with each other, practice, and stuff like that. Like, it is a sacrifice. And they sacrificing their bodies because if you try, like, honestly, even the best skaters like them, everybody pays the wood tax at some point, right? It's everybody falls. And then you can do a move today and it, and you do it perfect and nothing happens. You can do it tomorrow, and for whatever reason, you come down wrong, you can break an ankle, you can do whatever, right? Like, anything can happen. So, like he said, we sacrificed so much to be here, and we finally be here doing this. And I'm so, so happy. Like, they all saying it. Like, the fact that y'all got a skating, a roller skating competition show. Like, I hope this continues to go on. I hope it does not die out. I really hope this does not die out. I hope that this prompts more rinks to open up across America. Because if you watch that documentary, United Skates, and they show the lights going out, it's a map of America. And when you see the lights go out, that means that those rinks closed. And how skating just went away, basically. I mean, people were still skating, but, like, a lot of rinks closed. And, like, even here in B Baltimore. A lot of rinks have closed. It's one rink that's a staple, and I believe the reason that rink is a staple and it's still open is because the city bought it, and that's Shake and Bake, or as Baltimoreans call it, it's the bake, right? They got a really, really nice floor at Shake and Bake. They changed the floor maybe two years or so ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. And um, 
I've heard some people say the floor is too tight, but like it's not in the best area. And so some people are scared to go there um, and roller skate or whatever because they got like a police presence. But the police, they are inside the building. They not outside making sure you get in there safely and making sure when you leave, you get to your car safely at least. They inside the building sitting there watching you come back and forth because, again, it's owned by the city. But anywho, um, I hope that this show continues on for season after season after season. I still want HBO to bring back, or Max, to bring back the legendary show for, for like, ballroom culture and stuff like that. Because I think all of those things deserve their own competition shows. We don't need to keep seeing the same type of competition show over and over again. Like how you got America's, um, what's it? You got The Voice, you got, uh, what is it called? American Idol, like, oh, you got so many different singing competition shows, reality shows. Like, why we, why can't we have these little niche competition shows stick around as long as American Idol has stuck around and The Voice has stuck around? You get what I'm saying? Like, why y'all can't put budgets behind this stuff? You got so many of that type of show. And you get a niche show like Legendary. And you get three seasons out of it. And then it's gone. Like, why? I'm so happy Roller Jam is here. But y'all need to bring back Legendary. Even if y'all put it on another streaming platform or something. Like, it's necessary. It's needed. It's needed. It really is. It's needed. It's, it takes so much skill to do what they do on Legendary. Because them, them people get a theme every week. They got to create a whole routine based on that theme. They, they got to, uh, they got to get outfits created. Some of them sewing their own outfits. And then they got people that's helping them sew these outfits. Like, like, it's a lot. It's a lot. And then with the roller skate, and there's so much physicality in it. And it's, and it, like, I ain't even going up front to you. These people that be roller skating, th and this is for the people that's not familiar. Roller skating takes so much dedication, but it takes so much money. You got to think. You paying to go to the rink. You paying these people going, like, these people, like, to get good. You got, it's, it's a consistent thing, and it's like muscle memory for a lot of those moves. So you got to think these people paying all this money skating going to skate maybe four four or five times out of a week sometimes might be going to two and three sessions a day these um skaters be traveling because they be there's a whole lot of different skate parties and each like all these different cities and communities they have their own they put on a skate weekend a skate event so you paying money to travel to go to those and you learning about the skate culture in those areas. Uh the skates themselves. Those people that's on this show, they ain't got no cheap roller skates on. Not near one of them. Have on cheap roller skates. Now, cheap roller skates are cool if you are somebody that just go every once in a while and you just going around the rink, you're not doing much. But Skating is an investment. It's an investment in your body. Then when you skating more and more, and especially doing those competitions and all those things like that, like you gotta have, you gotta have different wheels for different surfaces. Number one, I do see some people use their indoor wheels on on asphalt and concrete. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, the concrete can like the wheels for indoor are super, are super hard and, and slippery, because you need to slip to go around those rinks, the floor of those rinks around that wood, right? But when you get outside on the concrete, the concrete can, like, the rocks can cut up those wheels, put divots and holes and stuff like that in your wheels. All right. Then when you outside, you're supposed to be having like a gummy or wheel. Um, they do make wheels. They have started making wheels that are good for you to be able to dance on your skates the way you would in the indoor rink. And they got them like a smaller size to make you able to transition through moves and turns and stuff like that easier. 
right? But those boots, the boots be expensive. Remember how I was talking about Dylan's boot and Iris boots. Her um well on here her name is a her real name is Akila, but on um I believe her name is Iris Iris Verdi on um on social medias. She was in the group the skate sh skate shots or shot skate. Her boot, the one I said that's pregnant and she met her husband at the ring. Those boot boots if they are a Rydell thirty two hundred, the boot itself starts at like six hundred dollars. Then you got to pay the $200 to get the color lab, which is you get in this side of the boot one color, this side of the boot another color. If you get in anything other than black or all black or all white boot, you paying $200. Then you got to think about the plate. The plate is the part of the boot that the wheels are attached to. Those plates, a really, really good plate that's lightweight and don't wear you down. A lightweight plate, they probably start at like $300, $400. Like I said, skating is an investment if you're going to get into it like that. And then the wheels. It's some wheels that cost $100 for eight wheels. It's some wheels that cost $125 to $150 for eight wheels. Like skating, excuse me, <coughs> this stuff gets expensive. And speaking of builds and expensive, there's one more group that I forgot to mention. This one group, I can't think of what their name was, but it was just three ladies. As soon as they came up on the screen, I said I recognize her. The leader of the group is Michelle Warren. Is her last name Warner? I forget. But Estrogen. She's the one, she's the owner of Moxie Skates, okay? Is three of them in her group. They was pregnant. She she didn't turn. She she got a house built, and um right like the house is it's is built on the end of a skate park because she got like the bowls, the ramps because that's the type of roller skating she do does. And I believe she used to do roller derby competitions too, right? Her house it's like you can see like they showed it. They showed the bowls, the ramps, and everything like that. It's a little, it's, she got her own personal skate park. She paid for her land and her house, like, it's the house sit back here. And when you come out, it's a ramp right there coming up. Like, you know how a house will have an awning on the front? Think of an awning, and instead of it being an awning, it's the ramp to go down and to skate. I said, oh, wow. She, she is dedicated. But anyway, she owns Moxie roller skates you know they got the skates that come in all kinds of colors and you know they got like the lolly skates that's suede that the lolly skate is the suede boot they for outdoor skating but they don't have any ankle support in them whatsoever i got three pairs of them because i just like all those pretty colors so she got moxie she got moxie lollies and they got a boot called jack jack is the the jack boot is the boot that has more um, more ankle support in it, and it actually has the like, which I do love. It got the little loop on the back to help you pull your skateboard on. And I wish, um, I know Rydell, Rydell makes her roller skates, Rydell makes her Moxie Lollies and her Moxie uh Jack boots. Okay, the other uh, I think Rydell might also make her. I don't. I haven't seen them in a while, but she has like a low grade skate boot called the Joyride. The because I have a pair in white. They cost me. They was like originally maybe like one ninety nine, and I caught mine on sale for maybe like one hundred and nineteen dollars. Right. They are equivalent to the Rydell one twenty. It's the same boot. They just got Moxie's name on it. Okay. So she got them. Then she got some skates called bunnies, um, beach beach bunnies. Then they they are vinyl boots that come from um. They are made by a company over in Asia. It's either China, Japan. I think they come. They made in China though. So her, 
her beach bunny skates they they got a wheel that says hybrid on they come with a wheel that's supposedly hybrid but to me the hybrid wheels i think hybrid wheels work for hybrid meaning that they supposed to work well for outdoors and indoors they do not and i'm here to tell y'all they do not her hybrid because i got a pair of beach bunnies i got the the animal print i think i might have showed y'all to see me skating them I y'all know I have a whole bunch of roller skates. Uh those wheels that are on there, those wheels to me, they're gonna work good if you want to use them in the they'll work good in the indoor rink for somebody who don't need all that extra slip because they still learn it to roller skate. They are great. They got real good to me. Those skates, they got good ankle support. I like my I like my um beach bunnies. I mine's are called the uh jungle, Ivy Jungle, that's what they call. They to me, I skate good in them. I do some practice in them, and I practice. I have gone to skate class and had the lessons in those. They are really, really good to me. Um, I feel like the other boot that she has is called uh, what is it called? Not trail rider. No, they just call rider. Um, Moxie riders, right? And they um. They they look like the old school skate with like they either black you get the either black ones they come in black or yellow and they got like the little the thing on the side that look like a rainbow with the um it's like curved like this with like the orange the yellow and stuff they look like the old school skates from the seventies right those are made in um and they only cost like a hundred dollars so they are plastic basically they they are plastic slash vinyl boot just like the beach bunnies. And the beach bunnies come in, in an assortment of colors. And also, the good thing with the beach bunnies, the beach bunnies come with the toe cap that goes on the front so that you don't damage the front of your boot up, beat your boot up. Like, that's protecting the toe box of your boot. Just so it's like different moves you do, it don't get beat up real, real bad, right? And then I do like what I like about the uh the beach bunny boots, that the plate that's on them is not super heavy. It's kind of light. I do like that. When you buy my um, when you buy the Joy Ride, which is the equivalent to the ride that wants on it, the lollies and the Jack Boots, they all come with the the stock plate on them. It's plastic and it's bendy. I don't like that plate. I've paid like before I knew any better and wanted to put the money out there. And instead of buying three different colors of lollies, I should have invested in just getting the pair of roller skates that had another, um, like a, a more expensive or a lighter weight, an aluminum plate, basically. That's a little bit lighter. That's what I should have did. But no, I'm like, ooh, these colors, and I can have these colors. I really, I've been considering um, putting up, Cause right now I got lollies in the, um in that Kelly green color. I've got them in the lavender color, and my very first pair of the lollies was the uh like the teal color, the turquoise color. Um, no, not turquoise. It's more like a teal. They called J. I think they called Jade, or is the green was called Jade? I don't know. But those were my first pair of lollies, and I don't think I want to get rid of them because they was my very first pair. So it's like a sentimental thing I'm holding on to, but I don't know. Then I was thinking, like, why don't I just keep the the green ones and the la purple ones, the lavender ones? Maybe I'll keep one of each and then sell them and sell uh one green boot, one purple boot as a, I, um together. I'll advertise it on eBay and see if somebody willing to buy them. I don't know. I don't know. Because I do need to start getting rid of some skates. I'm never going to get rid of the Joyride, the Moxie Joyride skates. Because I ordered them when I knew my grandmother was not going to make it. And we had, uh, no, I ordered them before then. I ordered them when we found out she had cancer. And she was like, she had like a bucket list of things that she wanted to do. She wanted to go on a trip. She wanted to have a skate party. And my grandmother held on for that skate party. We had her skate party on a Tuesday. She passed away that Thursday. 
and I ordered those skates and got somebody to spray paint my name on them and everything like that and spray paint um her initials on it and stuff like that. So I'll never cause they are customized. I'll never get rid of those. I'll always have them. But yeah, I'm telling y'all all this stuff about skates. But if you're gonna get into it, I, I I'm telling y'all all of this stuff, all this background and rambling because I just want y'all to understand that skating is not cheap. It is definitely it's an investment. It is it does a body good. You lose weight, you tone up so easily with the roller skating. I believe I've read in certain groups on Facebook that um in different skate groups, like one I remember in one of my groups the people was like, Yo, I never had a booty, but since I've been roller skating, I noticed my butt, like the definition in my glutes is getting a lot better. And that is true. I don't know. <laughs> It's because you're using your legs and then to skate properly, you do have to keep your knees slightly bent, which puts a lot of you carrying it in your your thighs and in your glutes. That's what's helping you skate or whatever, like, and it's gonna keep you toned up. But um, in this episode, let's get back to the show. I didn't ramble doing about roller skates and gear long enough. But the lady estrogen, her group, the night before they was practicing, and the young old lady that's in the group with her, she fell and hit her head. They showed the ambulance come, and um, she saw a doctor and everything. They told her to ice the back of her head, and they cleared her to compete in this episode. Um, They competed. I feel like they, their routine wasn't that strong. It, it it just wasn't. And so when it came down to the two groups that was going to have to skate during the Olympic skate, it was between Estrogen's group that I can't think of the name of their group yet right now and Skate Shot, Shot Skate. And that's Iris, Iris's uh, skate group, Iris slash Akela. So they picked... You know, um, you know that they gotta pick one person from the group to go and skate against, cause they to um, in an Olympic skate, you know they go they battle head to head, they skate for twenty seconds to a certain song. So they picked the guy KJ. She said they picked him because he is a performer. So they picked him and Estrogen and the other lady in her group. Them two did arm wrestling on the back of the one who fell the day before. They arm wrestled to see who was going to be the one to compete. I feel like the arm wrestling was just something for the TV because I knew that Astro Jen, she's the most famous one out of them. So she's going to be the one that go up and go roller skate or whatever. And I also feel like they made sure to show us the fact that that girl fell on her head to get some sympathy too. I think they tried to use the sympathy card to make sure that they wouldn't be in the bottom. But as soon as I saw Estrogen face and saw that she was in this competition, it's great because she get her name out there some more. But it's like, you don't need the money from this. You got your own company. And her skates, when I told y'all the prices of them skates, just think. That Joyride skate, they usually they retail for about 150 okay? The Beach Bunny skate, no. The Joyride, 150 the ride um the my the moxie what is that skate the riders the ones i told y'all that's made in china those retail for a hundred the joy so it, it goes in order like this it's the riders that's a hundred the joy riders 150 the beach bunnies retail sometimes you can catch beach bunnies on sale for like 120 that's the lowest i ever seen them go um on these at these skate shops the beach bunnies go from so from about 120 to 170 next you got the lollies the lollies go for 249 and then you got the jacks the jacks go for 499 okay i feel like wait a minute no the jacks go for 399 but i feel like since skating got so popular during the pandemic 
they raise their prices. They say it's because the materials cost more, but it's bullshit. They they know there's more people going skating, and so they're trying to capitalize while they can because they don't know how long this wave is going to last. So they up the prices. And so I believe that the uh, the joy rides, I mean, not the joy rides, the jack boot, they probably are about $4.99 for a pair right now. $499. And that's just... That's just for a standard uh, pair of Moxie Jack boots. If you're going to, like, change the sole, like, say you want cork. Like, you want the heel of your boot and the sole of your boot to be cork. That's extra money. If you decide to get a different type of plate than the plate that they come with, that's extra money. So, yeah. But anywho, so, those skates are really expensive, but... Michelle Estrogen competes against the KJ guy. She did nothing. She did like the split where you be on your hands and you keep spinning and spinning. She basically did that. He did more, uh, more skate moves and therefore his team is going on in the competition. And Estrogen and her team are going home. And that was episode two of Roller Jam. I see y'all next week. When it's time for episode number three. I think they're going to introduce some more skate crews. I think. I see y'all. Bye.